Lift up your banner, let your anthem ring. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up your banner, let your anthem ring. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Lift up your banner, let your anthem ring. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is Lift up your banner, let your anthems ring. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Amen. 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 <laughs> now, who is He? He is great and mighty. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Now, I'm going. Y'all got to help me out with this. Y'all, 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 y'all can stand. I want you to help me out with this. We're gonna get it arranged right here. Amen. If I can figure what gear it is, let's go to D. I think it's that. Let's go back to G. Y'all know where we at out there? No, go back to D. I feel it. D. Praise the Lord. Do, 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 do. Praise the Lord, do, 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 do. let all the God's children praise the Lord. Why don't you shake off those heavy bands, lift up those holy hands, let all the God's children praise the Lord. Now you get it.
know what that feels a little better? Praise yes, God. When we worship him and praise him, something's going to happen. That's when right. you start praising God, you look out, something's going to happen. Amen. Yes. Praise God. I done broke two on my pick. I got one more left. That's okay, though. We're going to praise him. Amen. Amen. Well, now walk around me, Jesus. Walk around, walk around me, Jesus. Walk around, walk around me, Jesus. Walk around, walk around my bedside, Lord. Well, now I lie and pray. Walk around while I am praying. Walk around while I am praying. Walk around, walk around my bedside, Lord. Well, now walk around me, Jesus. Walk around, walk around. Walk around, walk around me, Jesus. Walk around, walk around my bedside, Lord. Well, now I lie and shouting. Walk around while I am shouting. Walk around while I. Walk around, walk around my bedside, Lord. Well, now walk around me, Jesus. Walk around, walk around me, Jesus. Walk around, walk around me, Jesus. Walk around. I want him with me always, don't you? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, I like this one right here, too. Let's, let's just uh, think about it. I thought number one would surely be me. I thought I would be But I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountains too high and the valley. Cause I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I think that I'll make Jesus my all from now on. Trust him. I'll be less than a man, cause I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you 
Everybody to help me sing this song. Praise God for it. Amen. It was amazing grace how sweet the sound that has saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but
We'll praise God. Praise Him. Praise Just God. Just worship Him. Praise God. 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 Hallelujah. Lord, we just praise you this morning. We worship you, God. Lord, it's an honor to come in your house and praise you and worship. Thank worship you, God. You. Lord, our hearts worship you, our mouths worship you, and uplifted yes. hands Thank worship you, God, Thank because you're worthy Thank to be you. praised Thank and worshiped, God, because you are the King Thank of kings Jesus. and the Lord of Thank lords. You, and beside you, there is no other God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Lord, the riches of the world could not pay or buy one's soul. But praise God for your son and that redemptive yes. blood that was shed on Calvary. For each and every one of us this morning, God, yes, Jesus. the Thank price you, Jesus. has been paid for, yes. for those who want it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. To follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning. to follow Jesus and there's going to be no turning back for you I want you the ones that can stand to stand and just lift our hand up to the Lord and let him know Hallelujah. he knows your heart but it's a good to let everybody else around you know that you have decided to follow Jesus and there's going to be no turning back for you that no matter what comes down the road for you, any kind of problem or whatever comes down the road, there'll be no turning back you're going to follow him, and though nobody goes with you, you will still follow. And you, I, the Word of God, we can take the cross, and we can follow Jesus, and we cannot look back. Don't ever look back, because there's nothing back there for you. There's nothing back there for me. Why should I want to go back when I've got the best thing going? Amen. 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 I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning. Back. Oh, none go 
Jesus Christ. Don't ever, ever think that you're only one person. This only takes one light sometimes to draw someone to Jesus. It only takes one light to pierce the darkness in the life of somebody. So just don't ever think I'm just too young, I am, I am too old, or that I'm just not making a difference. Believe me, you're making a difference. You're you made a testimony when you walked out of your house this morning and you got in the car or the van and you came to the house of God with your Bible in arm and you were ready to hear the Word of God. That is a great testimony in itself. I love all of you. God bless you. I just couldn't help but say that because it's the truth and the truth will make you free. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, glory to God. God, hallelujah, I feel the fire up here, amen, that evangelistic fire's up there, better look out, amen, praise God, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, praise God, hallelujah, it's, it's something to be excited about this morning, I'm telling you right now, you know, uh, 
God is coming back. He said he would, and we know he will because his word is truth, and we've seen it happen time and time again. Praise God. So we know he's coming. Amen? Now, you know, the Lord's had me on uh, the purpose of the second advent, and uh, he wouldn't let me get off of it. This is about the fifth or sixth teaching on it, I think, but I think uh, this morning will be uh, it'll end up for what the Lord has on it. But uh, it's been exciting to teach and preach uh, about our Lord in the second advent, about what's uh, fixing to happen. And guess what? We're a part of that. I'm so excited uh, about that, the purpose of the second part five. So uh, we had uh, another session of it uh, Wednesday night, and I think we'll uh, wrap it up here this morning. But there's still some good stuff in here. Amen. Praise God. You could just go on and on and on, uh, really, when you get into it and everything. So uh, what I want to do, I'm just going to go back just a little bit before we get started. And, uh, you know, I was reading this morning in, in the book of Psalms and some stuff and the Lord revealed to me. He, he talked about a rich man and, and, and uh, uh, had everything and he had a, a, a scrumptious life here on this earth. But when he died, it said in God's word, he didn't take nothing with him, nothing. And it talked about uh, some of the things here on earth and everything, but it talked about redemption. It talked about the riches of the world uh, cannot buy one soul. The riches of this world cannot buy one soul. And our soul, praise God, has been bought and paid for by the greatest uh, price known to mankind. And it's the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. He's the one who paid the redemption uh, uh, price uh, for man's soul if man wants to go in that direction, praise God. Our choice, we have freedom uh, to choose what we want. But praise God, uh, just like Sister Jeanette, I felt the power of God on that. I have decided to follow Jesus. As most of us stood up here this uh, morning and raised our hand about deciding to follow Jesus, deciding to follow Jesus, there's things you got to do. You got to take responsibility. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's a mighty God. I want to just go over a few things right here. And I want to look the purpose of the second advent. We talked about uh, the first time we talked about he, uh, he come with vengeance and to judge and, uh, and to do some things. And then we talked about there's going to be no curse on this land. He's going to bring peace. How many want peace in here this morning? It's all over. It's fighting and feuding everywhere, uh, even in our families. And he's going to bind Satan. We talked about that. We talked about the battle of Armageddon. We talked about that and uh, some other things. And uh, I tell you right now, he is coming, and I'm excited about it. And uh, so Wednesday night, we talked about the, uh, some other things, the battle and all of that. So, uh, he, And we're going to talk about uh, he's going to heal everybody and prepare the earth for eternal habitation of our almighty God. He's going to come and rule and reign from this earth. You know, I was excited as I was studying some of this and looking at that. God has made a decision. He created the universe, by the way. He created everything, okay? Our God created everything, and he has uh, chosen the earth uh, for his rule and reign of the universe. Now, think about that. He has chosen the earth, his creation. By the way, this is his land anyway, and he has chosen earth uh, as his creation. And I'm here to tell you right now, he said that Jerusalem will be the place that I will rule and reign. They will be a new Jerusalem there. <clears throat> Praise God. And guess what? The saints and the angels are going to be a part of that rule and reign of the whole universe. And God, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost will be there the way it was uh, in the ancient of days. And he created man. And man had dominion of this earth that he created. And he was uh, excited about that. But man with that free will rebelled against God. I'm here to tell you this morning, uh, our God, <coughs> the Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes to second advent, guess what's going to happen? He's going to... Uh, give a man one more probation period uh, during that millennium thousand year reign uh, to, uh, to live for the Lord and quit rebelling. But some of them are not going to do it. That last change. Well, guess what? At the end of that thousand years uh, and that millennium reign, Jesus and the angels and the saints uh, is going to be uh, getting rid of rebellion and all those rebellious people is going to come against our Lord and the saints and us angels, I mean the angels and us saints one more time. And then Almighty God 
God. He's going to uh, throw some fire down from heaven and he's going to consume them and burn them up and throw them into the pits uh, and they're going to be down there for eternity right after God comes to rule and reign on this sinless earth that he uh, uh, created, by the way, and he'll call those dead in the grave that's in hell uh, those souls will be called up to the great white throne judgment of our God. He will judge them for what they have done and they'll be cast back into hell and darkness. There'll be no light there. They'll be cast in that place for eternity. Amen. That's what's fixing to happen. What's going to happen. We're going to be a part of that thousand year reign. But I'm here to tell you, God's fixing to come back. He said he would come back just the way, uh, as the Bible says, you see this, Jesus uh, ascending up on Mount Olive. He's going to come back and set his feet back down on the same place. Hallelujah. But, you know, I, I was looking at some, some prophecy last night on TV, and he was talking about, saying, well, listen, I don't understand. You know, God, he sends this uh, lamb down here, and this lamb, uh, it talks about the lamb in the Bible all the time, but that lamb uh, is the line of Judah, and that lamb has teeth, praise God, and that lamb is going to do something. Well, I'm here. I just wanted to get in there with them. I said, I wish they'd let me up there with them on TV because I tell them uh, that uh, uh, prophecy's been fulfilled. Jesus Christ came as a lamb, uh, praise God, and he submitted himself. Uh, he did not rebel or do anything thing to come against his creation that put him on the cross and crucified him. He was the lamb. But I'm here to tell you uh, this morning I'm excited because praise God he's coming back and he's coming back with vengeance. He ain't going to be no lamb this next time. He's coming back to defeat uh, the armies of this kingdom down here and they're already destroyed because when he come out of that grave on that third day he took the keys of, of heaven, I mean death, hell and the grave and they're all his and he's going to rule and reign and we're going to be with him. So you see, I, well, I'm excited so much about the second advent. That means he'll put his feet down. I ain't talking about the rapture this morning. The rapture, you know, what's happened there, we up uh, with the Lord uh, uh, get raptured up seven years up there. We were with the Lord before we come back to the second advent when our Lord Jesus sets his feet back down, uh, literally on this earth. Amen? That's what we're talking about. I'm excited, ain't you? Praise God. So that's a, just a little bit of what's fixing to happen here, praise God. Let's look at it. You know what uh, the second advent, uh, uh, we're going to talk about it. The first thing I want to talk about this morning is establishing a theocratic government. Now, what kind of government is that? I'll tell you what kind it is. I looked it up in the dictionary because I didn't know either. <laughs> but it is going to be a government it is this uh, our, uh, land is going to be governed by divine inspired officials. Now, who would that be? That would be God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. That's who it's going to be, praise God. They're going to rule and reign for eternity, and we're going to be in the light uh, uh, for eternity with our Lord. Hallelujah, praise God. And those who rebel against God and do not want to follow and love God, and all they're going to be in hell for eternity, and it's going to be dark down there. There's going to be no light. Talk about some heavy stuff here. Oh, I'm excited about it, though. Look here. Let's go into the book of Daniel. I like old Daniel. See if I can get this thing uh, functioning here. Look at here. Daniel 2, 44 and 45. We want to read just a little bit right here. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Who is that? That's our God. That's our Lord. He's setting up the kingdom, the material kingdom. See, there's already a spiritual kingdom down here, and we're in that kingdom because we receive Jesus in our heart. We're a part of that kingdom. But praise God, there's a materialistic kingdom up in heaven that's going to come down here and dwell among his creation. Hallelujah. Think about it. Look here. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. By the way, I really like that. Donnie Deal got up here and sung the other day. I love it. And he said, listen, God ain't never lost a battle. It was on Memorial Day, I think it was. <clears throat> God ain't never lost a battle, and he ain't, and he won't, by the way. So if you got Jesus in your heart, guess what? You want the win inside, amen? The win inside, hallelujah, praise God. No in between. Look here. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to another people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. 
and it shall stand forever and ever. What is it talking about there? The kingdoms of this earth. You know, we got all kind of country right here. Got their little kings and all that stuff. The Antichrist is going to rise up. All that stuff's going to happen. Well, them kingdoms going to be destroyed. The ten commonwealth kingdoms going to be here uh, right after we get raptured. And the Antichrist sets up. Uh, uh, they going to be destroyed. Hallelujah! Praise God and go. Our God's going to destroy them. He's going to rule and reign down here, and he will never uh, lose his kingdom. He will never be destroyed. He will be here to rule and reign for eternity. Hallelujah. And that's a theocratic government, a government that uh, is divinely inspired officials. Hallelujah. That sounds heavenly to me, don't it, you? Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that government. The ruling reign there. And guess what? The ruling reign of that government is going to be just. Uh, he's going to judge righteous uh, because that's who he is. He's truth. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm excited about that. Look at here. Let's go a little bit further right there. And it shall stand forever. For as much as uh, thou sawest uh, that stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands and it taken breaking pieces and iron, brass, and clay and silver. And the goal, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation sure. Now, what is that talking about? That's talking about old King Nebuchadnezzar. <coughs> king Nebuchadnezzar, who's the one who went down there and destroyed the, uh, Israel, and the, they got penalized because they turned and rebelled against God. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar come down there and destroyed the, uh, Solomon's temple, took all the silver and gold with him, and he took a bunch of the Hebrews. And by the way, he killed millions of Hebrew, I mean, uh, Jews. He did. And then he took a bunch of them with him, and they was enslaved in captivity to him for 70 years. Because why? They rebelled, they turned against God. That's why. And they had to face the consequences uh, because of that. And then old Nebuchadnezzar, <coughs> he's the one that would, uh, 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 you know, God put him under the role of that great king like it was. And he had this dream, and Daniel interpreted that dream. He had this dream to talk about brass and clay and silver and gold. He was the gold, and gold part, and then the silver come down to clay. And what that talks about, uh, the Babylonian reign and the Persian reign and the Grecian reign and the Romans reign. It talks about eight kingdoms and the old Grecian empire coming back up again. Old Roman empires are coming up again. I've seen on the Israeli live news this morning that all them people over there in Europe, I just hate to tell you the truth, but this is the truth, what I'm seeing. And just like Bible says, now all, a lot of them people in Europe over there are turning against the Jews. They're beating them up in the streets. They're trying to kill them and destroy them. Why? Because the Bible says the old Roman Empire around the Mediterranean Sea that ruled during that time will rise up again. Well, it's going to rise up again, but it's going to be destroyed. Because guess who the king's going to be and who the king is? We just read about him. His name is Jesus. It talks about eight Eight uh, kingdoms here. The brass, the silver, all those kingdoms coming down. Well, there's a night stone there. You see that stone? That stone is our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he will come down uh, after all those kingdoms uh, has presented itself and been destroyed. And he will come down and rule. And his kingdom will never fail. His kingdom will be there for eternity, praise God, to rule and reign the universe. That's all of his creation. Everything is his. This is his land. By the way, Jerusalem is his. And he can give it to who he wants to. Amen? But he's decided he's going to rule and reign there. That's awesome. Now, why is all this conflict and fighting going on? You know, I, I used to read Bible studies, and I said, pray for Jerusalem. Pray for, I mean, pray for Israel. And you're supposed to pray for Israel, but the Bible says pray for Jerusalem. Now, let me tell you why. What's going on there? The devil knows that the kingdom of kings is going to rule and reign from that spot right there. So he's getting all his demons of hell to try to come in and try to destroy Jerusalem and do all kind of things. I could tell you all kind of things. <clears throat> By the way, Woody, I was studying uh, this week and I seen the answer to your question. Why did he choose Noah? Because from Adam to Noah, Noah was a true Adamite linkage. The devil put angels in there and the, and the, and the uh, population started getting mixed and mingled. The devil was trying to taint the blood so the king of kings and the Lord of lords which going to come through the linkage of David and that heritage on down to Joseph and Mary would, would be ruined. 
But God said, I ain't going to tolerate that. And so we had uh, rebellion and evil going on except uh, for Noel and his uh, family found favor in the eyes of the Lord and he saved them. There's in, on the inside of the boat. The rest of them was on the outside of the boat and they were destroyed. You see that, Woody? I, I thought about you when I found that and got to reading and looking at it. The true Adamite stock was there in Noel, see? The true blood linkages from the creation. So, man, there's some, there's some great things going on. God's a great God, and he's a mighty God, and he knows uh, what's going to, he tells us what's going to happen. We just got to read and look at it, you know. I was in here praying this morning. I said, Lord, there's a lot going on on this earth. I need your help down here now. It's still terrible. I know I read the word, God, and we win in the end, praise God, but what about help now, Lord? <laughs> Amen. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's all around us. It's all around the world and everything. Now, Let's look a little bit further right here. But the ninth stone, that stone right there is the one who's going to rule and reign. And, and uh, he's the God of heaven. He'll set up his kingdom and never be destroyed. And it'll stand forever. How about that? You, you see, kingdoms come and kingdoms go. And the greed wants to rule this and do that and do all that stuff. But God's kingdom's going to stand forever. It will never, never. Let's look at uh, Zechariah 14.9. I want to read that too. And the Lord shall be king over all the Piedmont and Greenville. Uh-uh. <laughs> it said, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be, no, be one Lord and his name one. He is sovereign, praise God. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We see the Trinity right there, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. They're going to rule and reign for eternity. By the way, he had prepared to do that in the beginning, but old Adam and Eve messed up. They brought a curse upon this land, our earth, and the, and, and the earth cries out because of that. But guess what? The second advent, our God, he's going to remove that curse. It's going to be gone. Hallelujah, praise God. Can you imagine what we got looking forward to? We're going to live in a sinless society. There won't be no rebellion because all rebellion is going to be put down totally. And praise God, we're going to live in a sinless society for eternity. Oh, I really like that, don't you? Ain't going to be no sin no more. Devil's going to be uh, in hell for eternity, burn in that place. And by the way, there's no light there. But we're going to be in the presence of Almighty God and the sun and the moon ain't going to have to be used because that light's going to be so bright uh, from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that dwells uh, in Jerusalem in the Millennium Temple, not the future temple. We talked about that earlier too, you remember? Some of it. Let's go a little bit further right here and look. Now, it says right here, uh, I want to go to this next one. I want to go to Ephesians 1.10. It talks about he's going to gather together in one, all things in heaven and in earth. He's going to put it all together, you know. In Ephesians 1.10, we'll see that right here, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and are on the earth, even in him. So heaven and earth and all is going to be uh, put in that dispensation. And what does dispensation mean? It means rules. God's got some rules, ain't he? We got some rules by our, when you become a Christian, you got rules that you got to stand by. If you don't stand by them rules and look at that and obey God's commandments, you won't reap none of the benefits and the rewards that he has for you. And he wants everybody in his creation to have that. But he gave everybody a freedom of choice to choose where they want heaven or they want hell. If you're not serving Almighty God and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, that's heaven. Uh, that's uh, heaven upon this earth like uh, man can't imagine to be no curse, be no sin, none of that. That's the king you're serving. But if you're not serving Jesus Christ, uh, 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 the God of gods, uh, praise God, the God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost, uh, you're serving the other God. There is no in between. You either serving Satan or you serving God. I asked you this morning on the internet, who are you serving? 
I want you to be truthful with yourself. If you're not serving the true living God, ask God to show you the truth. And I pray the truth, the, the word of God says, will set you free. Hallelujah. If you want it, you can have it. But it's your choice. It's your choice. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> that in the dispensation the rules, the praise God, of the fullness of times he might gather together in all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Oh, 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 ah. he's going to put it all together down here. Is that not amazing? He created the heavens and the earth and the universe everywhere. he got the whole universe. He's got everything. He's God. But he said, I'm going to live on earth with uh, my creation, uh, the ones that dwell upon the earth. Amen. He loves us that much. Praise God. Let's go a little bit further right here. I like this right here. I could preach on this all the time. You know what he's going to do in Isaiah 33, 24? I'm just going to look at some of those old prophets before the New Testament. We know in the New Testament, by his stripes, we are healed. That's what the Word of God says. I believe it today. Praise God. And I've seen people healed, uh, uh, set free, touched, and delivered. Amen. But this is what uh, he said he's going to do. He's going to heal everyone. Everyone's going to be healed. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. Ha, 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 look, yeah. The inhabitants of that rule of government that's going to be on this earth for eternity that will never be destroyed and will stand forever. The inhabitants, we're going to be uh, the inhabitants down here with the Lord thy God. We're going to see them too, by the way. It says right here in God's word, I am, it says right, they will not say, I am sick. The people therein shall be forgiven of their inequity. You know what gets us sick a lot of times? It's a curse upon this land, isn't it? And when we get sick, what happens? The body goes, tires down, and starts being destroyed. This whole temple, the outside temple, before you know it, can go to the grave because of it. I tell you right now, you get in sin in a bad way. Now, not always because it rains on the righteous and the unrighteous, but you get in sin in a bad way. And I tell you right now, the devil tried to destroy you and tear you down. Sickness come on you. All kinds of things can come on you because you're not staying close to the Lord where you ought to be. But now sometimes a Christian will get sick too. A Christian might have abused their body. They might have done some things and that they know they shouldn't have been doing, but they've done it anyway. And uh, they have to suffer the consequences of that and face that because of that, you see. <clears throat> but I tell you right now, sickness is of the devil. It's not of God. It's part of the curse upon this land. But what does the Bible say right here? And the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. That tells me when we're dwelling with the Lord for eternity, praise God, we are the inhabitants here. There ain't going to be no sickness. All that sickness and pain is going to be gone. We can see that in Revelation. Revelation, one of my favorite scriptures, uh, <clears throat> verse 4, 20, 21, somewhere around there, it says, uh, There'll be no tears, no sorrow, no pain. I like that, don't you? That takes a lot of this curse that we're living in down here out of the picture. Amen? I'm excited about that. Ha-ha! Praise God. Let's go a little bit further right here. That's Isaiah 33, 34. Let's look at the next Isaiah 35, 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. My sister right here. They're going to be open. It's coming. They shall be open, and the ears of the dead shall be unstopped. Now, I got some stopped up ears here on Council of Vietnam. People look at me funny sometimes when they'll be talking to me. Like, huh? <laughs> it just happens. But, you know, I had a lot of compassion for a lady the other day. I was pulling in Bojangles, me and my wife. And this lady was standing right in front of the door in the walkway, I mean the driveway that goes around to the place where you order them biscuits and I was hungry. And so I'm sitting there and she's just standing there and her husband's on the curb right there and I'm saying, what's going on here? I was nice. I didn't blow the horn. I didn't want to scare her real bad. But all of a sudden her husband grabbed her and pulled her out of the way. <laughs> she's putting a hearing aid in her ear. Touched my heart really right there. Really touched my heart. Look at here. It says right here, the ears of the death shall be unstopped. So there ain't going to be no blindness, sickness. There ain't going to be no deaf ears and all that. God's going to fix it, ain't he? God is going to fix it. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see what we got coming here? He's going to heal everybody in that glorious time when we're uh, uh, there with him for eternity. Praise God. Now, let's look at here. Uh, we're gonna, uh, it says in the Bible that uh, at uh, 
we'll glorify God. The saints, that's us, will glorify God. I'll tell you right now, you know, I've told you before, you know, that time I seen uh, uh, Jesus' feet, I was down and I was bowed down to his feet and I was checking them out and I was praising him and worshiping him. I said, God, why you got on these uh, sandals, uh, these old sandals, because you a king, why ain't you got golden sandals on? You know what he told me? I'll never forget. They were massive looking sandals. Come way up here, you know, and everything. He said, these are my battle sandals. I'm coming back. And he told me that. And he's coming back. I know. I've seen his feet. I know it was him. But glory, we give him. I was giving glory and praise him. Look here. Let's see what the word says right here. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he set upon the throne of his glory. And behold him shall be gathered all nations, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Look at here. And he shall set the sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left hand. He's, a, he's, a, he's an awesome judge. That's who he is. Look at here. Then shall the king say uh, unto them on his right hand, Come and be blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. We are going to get to inherit uh, that kingdom, what God's talking about right here. It's going to be ours. Hallelujah. Think about it. But look at here for those other people uh, that it's not. You know, I was uh, riding up in, uh, me and my wife was blessed and got to go to Williams, Williamsburg, Virginia and see all that history and culture up there. You know, it's so exciting where America started in Jamestown, Yorktown and all that. And on the way in there, there was these wheat fields and they were so beautiful. And some of them didn't have a, a, a weed coming up nowhere. They was about that high, about ready for the harvest, you know. And then we got to these other wheat fields, and I looked, and there was weeds sticking up out of them. And God told me, he said, see them tares out there? He showed me one time in a vision I had of the earth, and he threw this giant net over the top of the earth. And it was a, the angels were pulling that net in, and it were people falling out of that net, going to hell. But there were people that was in that net that's going to be saved because of it. But he was throwing the bad out and keeping the good. I've seen that in a vision. You see, God's coming back, amen. And he's going to take, it talks about the wheats and the tares and some of that. Look at here. But ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. That's what we're supposed to do as Christians, you know. But we don't want to be used. You need to know what you're doing when you help somebody. Is there a true need there? If there is a true need there, we need to do what we can do. But you got to watch this world out there today because you got flim flammers out there everywhere. And they'll try to use you and abuse you and do things uh, that ain't right. Of course, one day they'll answer for that. Let's look right here and see. And it says, naked and you clothed me. I was sick uh, and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. I remember one time Roy and uh, Jeanette and a bunch of us went to the Dominican Republic and we went on the Haitian border down there and we went in this church. And uh, I'll never forget it. We had uh, 14 bags of clothes that we had brought from America. Boy, we fought to get them 14 duffel bags of little kids' clothes in there. And we got that far, but it's called no man's land between uh, the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Uh, there's a strip there about a mile or two that's no man's land. And they, we come up there to this church and we had these clothes and we felt like God wanted us to give those clothes to those kids. Because guess what? Those kids was naked, some of them. And I'll never forget, Charles, they lined up in the village. Uh, they lined up, Jeanette, to go uh, come in that church and the ladies was in there, Jeanette and all of them, and they was looking at the little kids and said, yeah, that'll fit you. And they was giving the clothes, you know, and powerful. And we... Me and Roy watched some of them. They would go out the door of the women with the clothes in their hand and their child, and they'd go back and get in line again. What would you do if you didn't have no clothes for your kids? You'd probably do the same thing. And that's what we've seen. But guess what? God give enough clothes for everybody. Putting clothes on the naked. Amen? Look at here. I was in prison, and you came unto me, Charles. We got prison service folks here that goes into prisons. Why do we do that? Oh, I want to go down there and preach. I want to go check it out. That ain't why we do that. The Word of God says to go. That's why we go into prisons, because God said go. Amen? 
Hallelujah. Look at here. Let's look a little bit further. And then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when you saw thee hungry and fed thee and thirsty and you gave thee a drink, uh, and, he, and when saw we a stranger and you took thee and naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we, uh, we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Burly I say unto you, insomuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. That settles that part, doesn't it? Look at here. And then uh, he, he uh, and 41 said, Then shall he say unto them on his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Why is that? See, he's judging. He's doing some stuff here. The inheritant people and then the people that's getting judged. Look here. Why is that? Because for I was hungry and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger. You took me not in naked and you clothed me not sick and in prison and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when uh, saw we thee hunger and a thirst and a stranger naked uh, or in prison did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Burl, I say unto you, insomuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everlasting life. Which one of those you like best? Punishment or everlasting life with the king, amen? We're going to be with him in everlasting life. <clears throat> the righteous unto life, eternal praise God, but the unrighteous, the one that's not doing these things that God asked them to do into everlasting punishment. Punishment. Let's go a little bit further. That's talking about uh, glorifying the saints. Now, what else is going to happen here? <clears throat> we're going to go to First Corinthians. Oh, I love this right here. We're going we're gonna to help Jesus prepare the earth for the eternal habitation of God. You see, God's not going to come down on this earth and uh, dwell upon this earth until all rebellion is out away from this earth. So a thousand years we're going to have to get rid of rebellion, prepare it, to, and Jesus himself after it's prepared and God destroys those people that come against us one more time, is going to give it over to his Father, God. You see that? Look here, let's read it. Then cometh the end when he shall deliver up the kingdom of God. Jesus is going to deliver up the kingdom to God. That's what it says. Even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and authority and power. You see that? All rebellion and power is going to be put down. And then he's going to give it to God. And God's going to come out of the third heaven. He's going to come down and dwell among his creations. Amen? Go a little bit further. For... He must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Who's that? Jesus and the saints and the angels. We're going to reign till all the enemy is under our God's feet and our king's feet. Look at here. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is what? Death. You see, that's a curse, isn't it? Death is a curse. God didn't mean it to be. If Adam and Eve hadn't sinned and done what they'd done, they'd have never died. They'd have lived eternity. Look at here. We're going to help prepare that. And look here. We're going to purge man of all possibility of future rebellion. The original program with man will be realized. Amen. Look here. Let's look at that just a little bit. It says right here. Uh, there it again. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifested that he is a, a, accepted which did put all things under him. Now, I want to tell you, we just read some of that right there. That's awesome scripture right there. I'm not going to go through that scripture again, but I want to look uh, at this next scripture. I want to look at Revelations. Praise God, 21.4. There going to be no more tears. There going to be no more sorrow. Look at here, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Uh -huh. We ain't got to worry about that grieving uh, our death, our loved ones. And by the way, there's a scripture fixing to come up here that Sister, Sister Jeanette quoted it, uh, I mean, talked about it last Sunday. And Sandra come back in the door and found it there. And God gave it to me as I was studying 
uh, to present it this morning too, but let's look right here. And God shall wipe away all tears from the eyes. There shall be more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. I'm excited about that, ain't you? Look here. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right uh, of these words are true and they're faithful. That's his promise to us. Amen. Now here's that scripture that talks about the former uh, uh, shall not be remembered. Sister Jeanette talked about it. Some of us in here was praying about our lost loved ones and we're concerned about our lost loved ones. Uh, and uh, when we get to heaven, guess what? If our lost loved ones don't receive God, uh, why are we down here? But when we get up there, we're not going to remember it. We're not going to grieve over it. We're not going to worry about it. We're not going to lose sleep over it. Why? Because the former things will not be remembered. <coughs> Look at right here. Let's go a little bit further. Oh, I ain't through with that yet. I will give him a thirst, the fountain of water of life freely. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and shall be my son. You got to, over, you got to be overcomer. The Bible says those who endure to the end. Amen? That's our responsibility. You're accountable for doing your part. Look here. Let's go a little bit further. But the fearful and unbelieving and the uh, abominable and the murderers, whoremongers and saucers, adulterers, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Them liars ain't got to change either, have they? I praise God when I used to be a young man. Praise God I used to lie. But I praise God I got a hold of God and I got to reading God's word. I quit lying. I quit doing a lot of things because the Bible says so. It says right here, the fearful, unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and whoremongers, and saucers, and adulterers, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the suck of death. Now, I want to tell you something. <clears throat> I used to do some of them things. Some of us in here used to do some of them. But when you put him in your heart, the blood of Jesus cleanses you of that. It's gone. Ha, ha. Is that not exciting this morning? It's gone. But let's look at that scripture right here that I was just talking about. That the, the former shall not be remembered. This is that scripture right here. Jeanette was talking about Sunday. She had it on her heart. As, or, or No, Wednesday night, wasn't it? Wednesday night. She had it on her heart. I was teaching on the second advent that let you know, uh, the folks that was here, that when you get to heaven, if your loved ones are not uh, saved, your mama, your daddy, your children, all that, uh, when you get to heaven, you're not going to remember it. So you're not going to grieve on it. You're not going to worry about it. Why? We just read where there'll be no tears in heaven. We just read that, didn't we? Let's look and see what this scripture said. God told me to bring this. For behold, I create new heavens and new earth, and the former shall not be remembered. Sandra come back in and gave me that uh, scripture. She went out there and looked it up. But look at here. The former shall not be remembered, nor come into your mind. So when we get in heaven or get on this earth to rule and reign with the Lord for eternity, our loved ones that's on here on this earth now, if they don't get uh, right before the Lord, before we go to be with the Lord, you'll not remember it. You'll not grieve over it. Right? No, no, no. We're gonna, uh, we ain't going to see them. There's a great guff that's going to separate them. We're going to be up, up there with them, Woody, with, with the Lord, or down here on the earth with the Lord. Now, there is some places... Uh, I'll get deeper, a little bit deeper in Isaiah, the last chapter of Isaiah. You can look and read and study the last few verses of that where the kingdom of God to be here for the millennium reign, that there's going to be these giant places that you can look down in hell and see people in torment. And that is a remembrance uh, uh, for the Lord thy God to do things right uh, here upon this earth. It's in Isaiah, the last chapter. You can see it. I don't have time to turn to it. Somebody wants to look at that, but it's there. I've read it and studied it many times. They're going to be a, a, a thing that you can look down into hell and you can see them being tormented and terrible things going on down there. But you're not going to remember your loved ones. You're not going to grieve over your loved ones. The Bible said there'll be no tears. There'll be no sorrow. There'll be no pain. Amen? That's getting deep too again, ain't it? The last few verses in Isaiah 66, it's in there. Anybody got that? If they want to read it, we'll read it. But I want to tell you something else. The former shall not be remembered. Uh, and we looked at that. And I want to tell you, the full benefits of the cross redemption, uh, redemptions realized and enjoyed eternally. Oh, ho, ho, ho. listen to that. 
the full benefits of the cross, that redemptive blood. You see it? That's what we're talking about. Do you find it? You find it, Jeanette? You want to read it out loud, somebody? Uh, this is Isaiah 66. It talks about, uh, it's the last few verses in Isaiah. It talks about the worm will not die. Huh? Look at 24. Read it, Jeanette, if you don't mind. The worm will not die. I just want to confirm what the word said because it ain't what this pastor says. It's what God says. Oh, hallelujah. The truth will set you free, amen. This is just something a little added in here to answer that question. Jeanette, read it. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Said they'll look upon them, right? That's right. See right there in the last days and the end times and when we were God uh, for eternity to praise God, the, the natural people that's on earth, see they're going to be saints with resurrected bodies, it's incorruptible bodies, and we're going to help rule and reign. The natural people of this earth are going to continue to go on and replenish the earth. Guess what? Those natural people will be able to look down and see that and it will be a testimony to them. Hey, I'm not sinning against God. There ain't going to be no rebellion this this is a sinless society, and it's going to stay that way. You see that? It said the worm will not die, and it's talking about that soul that's in hell will never die. It'll be, it'll be uh, tormented for eternity. Now let's look right here. The cross redemption, we realize and enjoy what God's done for us. Let's look at Revelations 22, 1 through 5. And he showed me a pure river of water of life clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God of the Lamb. <coughs> God the Father, God the Son. There's a trinity right there. Look at here. And in the midst of the street of it and either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare 12 manners of fruit and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse upon this world. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's give God the glory right there. The curse is going to be gone. <laughs> Look at here. I, I, but the throne of God in, uh, of the Lamb shall be in it and his servant shall serve him. We're going to serve him. Praise God. And they shall see his face. Ooh, we're going to get to look at him. And I, I tell the Lord, when he looked at me sometimes, Lord, I ain't Peter and I ain't John. I'm Ricky. You made me. <laughs> Let's go a little bit further right here. And they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. And they shall be no more night there. And they shall need no candle, neither light of the sun for the Lord God. giveth them light and they shall reign forever and ever. Let's give God glory right now. We're going to reign forever and ever with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise God. We got a, a tremendous thing to be thankful for. Hallelujah. Praise God. <coughs> and that completes what God wanted me to minister on, the second advent and the purpose of him coming. Amen. It's exciting, y'all, to be Christians and to know what he has prepared for those who love him. Amen? Uh, I mean, it's so exciting uh, what we got to look forward to. And we can't imagine when we get with him to live with him eternally <coughs> what he has for us. Amen? He has prepared something great for us. Praise God. And I want every head bowed. Every head bowed. And I want to ask some folks something. Jesus is knocking at your door right now. You got, you feel like Jesus knocking at your door. You ain't, you ain't living the way you should, or, or you feel like, hey, I want to be saved because I want to be in this. What's fixing to happen upon this earth? I want to be a part of it. I want to talk to the people on the internet right now. If you want to be a part of this uh, second advent and rule and reign with the Lord thy God, just cry out to the Lord, and He loves you. If you'll ask Him uh, to come in your heart, He will do that. He said, if you'll confess your sins, that uh, He'll forgive you of these sins. Because he loves you. But uh, you need to confess and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've rebelled against you. I ain't done what you've asked me to do. 
come in my heart and be Lord of my life. He'll do that. And if you'll believe that he sent his son Jesus, you got to do it. The Bible says, uh, uh, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man will come to the Father except by me. You can't get to God except you believe in his son Jesus who paid the ultimate price for your soul through his innocent blood. No, no one else has done that or can do that. Only him, and he's done it. You got to believe that. If you believe that and ask God to come in your heart, he will come in there. He loves you. And if you want that, I ask right now, You'll ask him to come in and receive him and then get a Bible and read. Uh, your part is uh, discipline yourself and read what he has for you. you got some great things for you. <clears throat> and obey his commandments. It'll change your life. The old man will be dead. A woman will be dead. The new man, new woman will come for you. God loves you. If you've done that, please get on that internet and drop us a little note and say, I've done that. Because we want to rejoice with you. We pray God to bless you in Jesus' name. Now, every head bow. Anybody in here want to be saved, raise your hand. Anybody? Anybody? I see that hand. I see those hands. Look at these young ones. 